Hello there, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to create some icons in Illustrator. So to get started, you want to go in Illustrator, go to File, New, and you have all these presets for different sizes of documents you can create. We're going to do something different. We're going to come over here to the right side, and here where it says inches on mine, it might say something else on yours, but we need to set the unit of measure. We're going to set this to pixels, uh, just because icons tend to have some common sizes that they follow. Um, so depending upon what you're creating the icon for, it might be um, 24 pixels, 48, 128, 256. Um, but um, the aspect ratio tends to always be one to one, meaning the width and the height are the same. So we'll just go somewhere in the middle. We'll do 128 and 128. And then click Create. Um, some of these other things, actually, we're going to switch to, sorry, we're going to switch to RGB mode first. And keep everything else the same. All right, so once you do that, you should see a blank canvas in front of you. Uh, this is called your artboard. Um, so in your artboard, you can click your artboard tool over here. It, uh, just if you want to make sure, if you click on this, it says artboard one. Um, and you'll see up here in the top, it says 64 by 64. Um, oh, sorry, this is the position, um, but the width is 128 by 128, so this is, this is correct. So to get started, let's come in and let's just create some guides for us. So we want to uh, create some guides so that we can place our um, icon in the center um, and do some other things with it. So what we'll do is um, let's click the line segment tool. And then you click and drag. So I'm click and drag from one edge of the screen to the other. Um, as I'm clicking and dragging, you'll see I can, you know, it's not going straight. If I hold down shift, it'll go straight and drop it there. So now that I've done that, you can see the it is selected. If you look up here, you can see the position. So the x-axis, it is at zero points on it within this artboard. The y is set to 49. Uh, now, since our... Um, artboard is 128 by 128. We want this to be right in the middle. So the middle of 128 would be 64. Or we can actually just have Illustrator do the math for, the, for us. If we do 128 divided by 2, it'll put it at 64. That's cool. Now we're going to do the same thing from top to bottom. Um, if you hover, you'll see that there is this pink line that comes up when you get close to the center. This is a guide that's helping it. It's trying to predict what you want to do. So this is great. So now I can just click and drag, hold down shift to go to the center. And there we go. Um, you can look up here. Uh, everything is right at set. X is at 64. So this is right in the middle. Um, so I mean, there are other ways of doing this, but this just helps us to understand a little bit about how the artboard works and how it deals with coordinates. Let's now create a circle. So if you click this line segment, click and hold, and then you can get an ellipse tool. And click and drag. What we want to do is create a circle that is the full size of the artboard. So we could do this a couple of ways. We could click up here, uh, click and drag from the very top. Um, notice that it's an ellipse. There's no uh, uh, defined aspect ratio to it. Uh, if you hold down shift, it keeps an aspect ra ratio of 1 to 1, so it's a perfect circle. So we can come all the way down and do it that way. Um, we could also, just if we clicked and let up, it'll ask us what dimensions we want for our ellipse. So we could just type in 128 by 128. Once we have our ellipse, if it's not in the center, um, if you try to click on it, it's not. you have your ellipse tool, so you can't move it and select it. Instead, you need to come over here to the top left and click your selection tool and then you can drag it around, put it where you want it. So there's one ellipse. Now let's do one more. This time, let's do, um, instead of 128, let's do 64 by 64. And we want, again, to put this in the center. Um, so we could do this the ways that we did before, or we also have in our align window, if you go to window, um, align, and then if it's either, either pop up or it'll show over here, um, you have a horizontal align center. This will align it to the um, 
If you click this drop down, they'll tell you what it'll align to. So it'll align to the artboard, the white area. So we're going to center that and then center that. And so all this is doing is it's giving us kind of a, a place to start from um, for so we know how big to make our icons. Let's do one more circle. I'm just going to click. Let's, um, let's do this one instead of 100, 128. Let's do this one as um, 108 by 108. This means that it's uh, 10 pixels smaller in each direction than, uh, than our largest circle. So what this will allow us to do is um, we're, 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 we're setting this as a template so that then when we start drawing our icons, uh, we want to leave a little bit of a margin. Um, and so this is here just for a guide for us. Uh, so there, so that is just giving us a little bit of a grid that we can start to work from um, to draw an icon. Now, we can so now select all of these. So if you get your selection tool in this black arrow, click up here in an empty area and drag, and you can select everything. Set the uh, stroke color. So if you look over here on the left, um, you have a fill and stroke. The top one is fill, the bottom one is stroke. If you double click stroke, you can choose what color you want it to be. So we're gonna just set this down to a light gray so that it's it's there, but um, but it's you know not really visible to us right now. All right, and so now let's start making some icons. Let's start with something really simple like a, um, a plus. So if we want a, a, a plus icon to add something. So to do that, let's just start. We could do that with text. We could use like the plus key, but we're going to draw it instead. So if you get your rectangle tool again, or I guess the first time, your rectangle tool. So it's here in your, your shapes where your ellipse and your line segment were. So select rectangle tool and just click and drag. And, um, you know, we have these guides here to help us. So you can kind of just follow this, this smaller guide, uh, this smaller circle. Um, this is not centered, so if I open my align panel again, if it's not open, go to window align. You can center it in ver horizontally and vertically. For this, though, we want we don't want a a fill on it, or we don't want a stroke on it. So um, the best there are a couple ways of doing this. And in Illustrator, you might have different layouts um, or different workspaces. I'm going to switch to Essentials just so that um, we can see something similar. So if, you're, if you want yours to look more like mine, if you go to Window, Workspace, Essentials, it'll show up uh, more similar to mine. Um, so over here now, I have a color panel. And if you want the color panel to pop up, you can go up to Window, Color, to have it pop up. OK, so now having my, my rectangle selected, um, if I, sorry, I'm telling you the wrong thing. What I want is appearance. So I want the appearance panel. Okay, here it is, appearance. So in appearance, you see you have a stroke and you have a fill. So the stroke is right now is set to one point um, and the fill is empty. So I click stroke, I'm gonna drop this down to zero. I wanna get rid of the line around it. And, but I do wanna fill it. I wanna fill it with, we'll just make it black. Um, so now I have a rectangle. Um, I don't want a true rectangle. I want it kind of curved on the edges. So if you select it, you can see these four grab areas on the er, in each of the corners. If you click and drag, you can now round the corners a bit. So that's nice. Um, and so this is the first part of our of our plus. Now we want to make a horizontal version of this. So we could draw that manually, but we want it to be the same. So to do that, we're going to click on it, go to Edit, Copy, and then Edit. If you just paste, it's going to paste it nearby, but we don't want to do that. We want to paste in place. And what this does, it pastes it right on top of where we copied from. So now we actually have two of these. Um, the nice thing about that is that we don't have to worry about you know, moving things around and getting back to where we need it to be. Um, OK, so now that I have this new one selected, uh, if you hover up here near the top corner, 
Um, if you're on this square, you can resize it. We don't want to do that, though. We want to rotate. So if you go a little bit further out, you have this rotation tool. Um, it looks like an elbow. So if you click and drag, um, you can now rotate. Um, similar to when we were drawing lines and things, if you hold down shift, it goes in, um, it goes in increments. It goes in 45 degree increments. So we want to rotate 90 degrees like this. Okay, great. And so now that is a, a plus. So um, if we want to now get rid of the um, guide here in the background, we can either just delete it. Uh, so we can just select and delete that way. Um, or we we'll, can leave it for now. All right, but there's our first icon. Let's go ahead and create another one. The easiest way of doing this, that is to select your artboard tool over here. And if you click on your artboard one, copy and paste, it'll paste right next to it. And so now we have a different artboard that we can work on. So let's do, um, you know, another simple icon would just be a minus icon. So something like that. Let's also do, let's do it again. So I'm going to select my artboard tool, select artboard one, copy. So go to edit, copy, edit, paste. Um, what we're going to do now is turn this plus into an X. So if I click, click um, my vertical bar, hold down shift, and click, click my horizontal bar, now I have them both selected. Um, I'm going to do my rotation again, so I'm going to click the rotate button and rotate both of them at the same time. If I hold down shift, we can go 45 degrees like this. So now we have an X icon. Those are looking nice. Um, okay, let's try something a little bit more complex. Let's try a check. Um, checks are actually a lot harder than um, you might initially we might initially think. But there are a couple ways of doing a check. Let's get our artboard tool again. We're going to copy, paste again, and. Um, to do a check, one thing we could do is just kind of resize the pieces of, of our X here. Um, so I click on this this rectangle. I can resize this to be shorter. Then I can grab the other one, move it around, do something like this. I'm going to keep it within my, my margin area. And then this is too long. So now if I just, just select this one. So I've had them both selected, and I tried to resize and do weird things. If I just select this one, Resize down. I probably want to do something more like this. Just play with it till it looks till it looks right. Something more like that, I think. Okay, um, let's do one more, and we're going to try one more tool that we haven't used yet. We'll use the pen tool. Um, so I'm going to get my artboard tool again, copy, paste. Um, I'm going to completely, though, I'm going to click off, and I'm going to click back on the these black areas, delete those. Uh, let's get the pen tool. The pen tool is great for drawing um, more complex shapes. So um, let's draw... Um, my goodness, my mind's gone blank. What would be a good tool to draw? Let's try to draw a, a drop of water, um, which you might use for a variety of things. So I'm going to start, I'm going to hover on the center, my center line, uh, just so that I start off in the center. I'm going to click and let go. Now as I move around, it's following my cursor. Um, I'm going to come down here, but instead of just clicking and letting go, I'm going to click and drag. And when I click and drag, it starts to create a, a bit of a curve. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to come down here to the bottom, click and drag. I'm going to do it until it looks pretty much in line with this circle. And then click and drag over here, do the same thing. Um, as I'm clicking and dragging, you can see it's going. it can go in all kinds of directions. If you hold on shift again, like we've done for a few other things, it'll go straight up and down. And then click back on your initial point to anchor it. And there we have a bit of a, of a water droplet. 
Um, one other thing we're going to do here, I mean, we could rescale this, do other things with it. I don't like exactly how this looks yet, so I'm going to play with it a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to click on it and then choose the white arrow, direct selection tool. What this allows you to do is um, the, black the black selection tool lets you select an entire object, but the white selection tool allows you to, to select pieces within the object, specifically the points that make up the object. So um, when I have the white selection tool um, on and I have my water droplet selected, you'll see this water droplet is made up of four points. And so I could come in and select individual points and adjust those and move those around. So I'm going to get the top point, drag that up a bit, and then I'm also going to do some other things to try to make it look a little bit more like a droplet. Uh, I'm not quite happy with that. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is click up here in the top left where I got my pen tool initially. Well, actually, I'm going to do something else. So they changed this in a recent version of Illustrator. They used to have a separate tool to do this, but it looks like they've put it together. So get my pen tool again. Um, well, actually, first, I want to make sure that I have it selected. So get my black arrow tool, select the, the water droplet, then get my pen tool again. Now, because of the water droplet is already selected, it's going to let me edit it. So if I hover on the edge of it, you'll see there's a plus icon that pops up. And so I want to put a new point here and a new point here. What that allows us to do now is gives us more points of control over the water droplet. So now if I get the white arrow, I can click and drag just those points to do something to make it look a little bit more like what I want. So I might do something like this. I'm happier with it. So you can play with that some more. Um, okay, but once we get it these these to a place where we're happy with them, uh, these are looking like you know pretty solid icons. Um, if we want to delete all of the um, the grids in the background, there are a few ways of doing that. Um, one way is to go select all of the grid items on one of the artboards. And then if you do select uh, same appearance, it'll select all the elements on the entire document that look similar to what you've selected and then press delete. And oh, look at that, got rid of all of them. All right, and we save it and we've got a set of icons.